If you are a kettlebell beginner and you're looking for a head start, click the first link in the description. It takes you to our free 30-day kettlebell workout course. Click the link, sign up, and enjoy. After perfecting each and every facet of movement in the ballistics, swing, clean, and snatch, I have finally arrived at a point of proper callus management. I'm not saying that this journey of form perfection is complete. I highly doubt that this will ever be the case. The point I'm trying to get across is that I can now put the 28 kg and 32 kg respectively to work for prolonged sets of time without cuts, tears, bloody hands or painful blisters. Mind you that I consider anything beyond 24 kg as heavy pertaining to unilateral ballistics. I still get the occasional loss of skin, but this is due to a cleansing and peeling effect in the rejuvenation process. Old particles die off and are replaced with newer and stronger ones. I remember kettlebell champion Dennis Vasilev pointing out on his IG that lifting heavy weights does not automatically translate into brutal lacerations of your palm skin. In fact, quite the opposite is true when you take care of developing proper form. I'm happy to say that I can now add weight to this argument by extension of personal experience. In the same token, my forearms are perfectly crisp and clean, showing no signs of alien-like extensions of additional bumps the body created in response to repeated crash landings of heavy weights from the clean. If you are using gloves, wrist protection and safeguards, I challenge you to reconsider your form. Take time to perfect the details and adjust if necessary. Aside from questionable form, gloves and other accessories warp your perception of handing the kettlebell altogether. Gloves, for example, thicken the handle of your kettlebell, demanding an increased as well as unnecessary effort. Wrist guards let the lack of development of proper form off the hook, since they now take the brunt of the weight on impact. An impact that isn't imperative if your hand insertion is effective as well as efficient. There is a case to be made for belts in the sport since they close the distance to genetic advantages such as a short torso and long legs. According to Arseniy Jernakov, belts also serve as lower back protection. Although this stance stands up for debate in my opinion. Let's extend this discussion to the feet and flooring. Kettlebell lifting shoes as well as wooden flooring are optimal if you A. want to compete and or B. suffer from insufficient ankle mobility. Why would you might be asking? A gentleman by the name of Mauricio Leal summed it up perfectly in a post on a CrossFit forum. Quote, the purpose of the wood is to have as hard a surface as possible so that all forces you produce get transferred directly to the bar or kettlebell immediately as opposed to the spring and dampening effect of standing on the mat or in your case sand referring to another forum participant. Wood is substantially harder than rubber mats so they fit the bill. Close quote. If there are no aspirations to become a competitor, going barefoot is the best option in many cases. At the end of the day, there might be a justification for any type of accessories. Yet, I recommend to follow the raw kettlebell training philosophy, similar to powerlifting. If you don't experience any type of genetic disadvantage or disability, you're better off saving money on enhancements and rather invest time into becoming a better lifter. Slashed open, mangled and mutilated dermis is not a badge of honor, but a badge of improper use of the tool in question. There's no need to prove to anyone that you can handle the big weights when your soft tissues take massive collateral damage every time you take your kettlebell for a spin. The fact remains, if you're always in dire need of accessories, support wheels and gadgets, and you're not even able to swing some weights without them, reconsider your approach. As there is no shame in decreasing weights to work on your technique, there's also no honor in going hard when your weakest link in the chain isn't even ready to go medium. If you're looking for kettlebell courses that can help you lose weight, build muscle and improve your kettlebell technique, then check out the Laborstock Academy. Let us help you discover a new perspective on kettlebell training, making it simple and easy for you to understand. Join the waiting list of your desired course now and secure your spot when it's open for enrollment. Link is in the description.